Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we are going to do a repaint on this Red Hood helmet. So this is a project I started about a year ago and then abandoned. When I decided to come back and finish it, I really wasn't digging the paint job. As well in the past year or so, I have dropped this helmet many times and I'm pretty sure I left it in some direct sunlight longer than it ever should have been. Since this was printed in PLA, I was left with some layer separation. The quick fix for this is a filler made from CA glue and baby powder, then sanded flush. I also want to mention that I did not remodel this helmet. It was a download from Thingiverse and the link to the file in the creator will be in the description below. And as we all know, when you're sanding, start with a low grit and progressively work your way up to a higher grit. And if you want to keep the dust levels down in your workspace, use wet sandpaper. Once everything was sanded flush, I primed the whole helmet using Duplicolor Mastic Automotive Primer and then laid down Graytex Wicked Red as the base color. Since there's going to be a decent amount of taping in this project, I added 4030 Balancing Clear to the paint. What this does is help with the overall durability and adhesion of the airbrush paint itself. While the 4030 Balancing Clear isn't necessary to add to your paint for a successful paint job, I do find it drastically reduces is the chance of any sort of paint peeling off when you remove any sort of masking. Even if you detack your tape, there's always that risk of paint peeling off when you remove your masking. I want the end result of this paint job to have layers of dirt and water stains as well as some paint chips. To start this I'm using a crimson thinned down about 20% with a reducer and applying it around some of the edges of the helmet, mostly around the eyes and forehead area and also around the buckles and any sort of prominent edge. Then with a torn off piece of sponge I'm using the same color thinned a little bit more and adding some watermarks to the areas I just airbrushed. Now we're going to do some masking. Not a lot to say here, I'm just starting off with some quarter inch tape to get the contours and then moving up to some two inch tape to finish off the mask. It's real exciting stuff. All the masked off areas I want to paint black. Now I could just paint these black, but since I want to have a little bit more subtle detail, I'm starting with a 60% gray. What this will allow us to do is progressively build up paint textures and shades, adding more subtle weathering detail to our overall paint job in the end. Next, with a torn off piece of sponge and the cheapest, most dollar storiest black paint that I have, I'm going to stipple over all the gray. Once I'm happy with that and the stipple layer is dry, I'm going to take some black acrylic ink and start blending some of the stippling into the gray. Since the ink is transparent, it'll still allow some of the texture of the stipple coat to show through. These details are relatively subtle, but add a bit more interest than one solid color. Carrying on with the grime and water staining, I'm making a relatively thin wash using some water and raw umber ink. This wash I'm only going to add around the creases around the eyes, as well as the recesses on the side of the helmet where the buckles are. As I'm applying the wash, I'm also going to hit it very quickly with a hair dryer and then dabbing off the excess. This is going to help flash the edges of the wash and leave us with a water stain look that we can continue to build on as we add more layers of paint. Now for some chipping. To do the paint chipping effect on this helmet, I'm taking some blue tape and as you do, I'm just tearing it. Then with the torn edges, I'm using that as the mask to give me the shape of the paint chips. This is a fairly quick and cheap way to add realistic looking chipping effects to your paint jobs. And if you want to do longer chips or scratches, you simply tear a longer piece of tape off, tear it lengthwise, and repeat the process. Once all the areas to be chipped are all masked off, I'm going to take the same dollar store black paint that we used prior 
and stipple that over all the areas where we want paint chipping. Now the reason why I'm basing this out in a black first is because the silver I'm using, also from the dollar store, has almost no opacity. So this specific one that I'm using shows up best when over a black or darker base coat. The advantage to this, however, is that some of the black will still show through to silver, mostly around the edges, and this variation in color gives a more realistic look with very little effort. going to carry on with the distressing of the paint by adding some wear marks. For this I'm using some of my older rattier brushes and then picking out some areas on the helmet, mostly areas with hard edges or spots that might see a lot of rubbing over time. Then using a combination of stippling and dry brushing, I'm going to slowly build up the wear effect. Effects like this can be as subtle or as aggressive as you want them. Just take your time till you're happy with the overall look. Now that we have the effect of having some exposed metal, it would be logical to assume that there would be some amount of rust or tarnish on some of these areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load my airbrush up with Sienna. In this case, I'm using Surgery Sienna from the Tim Gore Bloodline. This is an illustrator color, so it does have a level of transparency to it that will allow us to better build up things like rust effects. This is my go-to to start most of my rust effects, but it's not the rule. So whatever you have around or whatever you find works best for you when doing these types of effects, just use that. I've reduced this paint about 10%, and all I'm doing is going in with low air pressure and picking out a few areas that I want to add a bit of rust to. I'm keeping my air pressure low and slowly building up the effect. I want to start building up more grime in the recessed areas. So for this I'm mixing up another wash using a roughly 50-50 mix of umber and sienna. And just like with the wash before, we're going to add it to whichever area that we want it to be in, quickly hit it with a blow dryer, and then dab away the excess. And then continuing to do this until we end up with the level of grime that we're looking for. Moving on to the rest of the helmet, using the same umber and sienna wash mix, I'm going to start adding it across larger areas of the helmet using a chip brush in sort of a patchwork sort of fashion. By this I mean I'm not going to try to cover the entire helmet in one shot, rather I'm just going to work section by section and being as random as I can. This is going to help us with the layering effect. And just like before, as I'm adding the wash, I'm gonna hit it with the blow dryer, flashing the edges, and then dabbing away the excess. And repeating the process until I'm happy with the overall results. One of the first steps that we did in this project was adding crimson around the eyes and around various edges of the helmet. Now that we've done several layers of washes, the crimson's been muted a little bit more than I want it to be. So I'm going to take that same color, go back to those areas where I applied it earlier, and just bump it up a little bit more. Revisiting this color also gives me the opportunity to maybe add it in some other areas of the helmet. We're at the point where we want to add some lenses to the helmet. I'm using a recycled piece of card from a box of light bulbs I purchased some time ago. I'm using this to make the template that I can then transfer onto some PETG. This is the plastic I'll be using for the lenses on the helmet. To fix the lenses to the helmet, I'm going to use hot glue. The reason why I'm using hot glue rather than something like CA glue is the vapors from CA glue are likely to fog the lenses. So even though hot glue is a little bit more of a pain, it's less likely to do any damage to the lenses. One of the last things I did was add LEDs to the lenses of the helmet. Now I'm not going to subject you to my horrible LED wiring skills. I also did add a vinyl mesh to help diffuse the light of the LEDs. 
Now you may have noticed that throughout the video there was one Allen bolt that was missing from the helmet. The reason for this is that I wanted a hidden on off switch. So what I did for this bolt and all the other bolts on the helmet was cast them up using Smoothcast 300. All the original bolts in the 3D model I previously had drilled out when I was originally working on this helmet to add the resin Allen bolts. Now all I did for this final bolt or bolt switch if you will was once all the LEDs were installed, I put the on-off push switch behind the recess where the bolt will go and then just glued it into place using some CA glue and we now have a hidden on-off switch on the helmet. And that's it, the Red Hood helmet is finally done. If you've made it this far in the video, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. And if you're at all interested in supporting my channel, there's some links in the description below. Other than that, I wanna thank you all again for watching and I will see you all in the next video.